All right, in this video, I want to start replicating some of the stuff that we have. Can I do that as just over there? Uh, I really have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know why it won't dock. Oh, we're going back to the bottom. I'll just leave you scrolled all the way down. So that way, when we pick up items, I want everything to pretty much be, well, replicated and handled how it's supposed to be. So server authoritative. So to begin, I want to start out simply with the items itself and adding them to our inventory. So I'm going to close down pretty much everything. Here we have our item.cpp. When we interact, you know, obviously we go through and interact. And we have everything in here, yada, yada, yada. So we call our add item to inventory widget. It just goes through, adds the item, and then it just destroys it. So I don't know why it took us back here. But anyways, so we add the item, then we destroy it. Well, the destroying part, that's fine. It doesn't really matter because we want to do this on the server, and that's going to trickle down to all the clients. So in order for that to happen, we just want to replicate. So we're going to set B replicates equals true in our item.cpp constructor, and that'll take care of that. However, this currently is running only on the client. That's kind of a bad thing. We want it to run on the server. So we also only want to destroy it if our character is valid. So that way if the item gets picked up, we want to destroy it. So if character, if we add it, we destroy it. I also want to only do this on the server. So just to be safe, I want to do if as authority and character is valid, we add it and then destroy it. So that takes care of pretty much that. Now in our add item to inventory widget, okay, scratch that that's a blueprint implementable event. We need to figure out kind of a way to handle all of our items. So I'm trying to think, do I have an array of items or anything? How am I doing this? And I think I'm just adding, adding to the widget for the time being. So what I want to do is we have our F item data structure here. I want to have an array of that on my character that is replicated and controlled by the server. So we're going to have a blueprint read write u property. And I'm going to do this under, I guess, update stats. We want to have a T array of F item data. And let's call it. Uh, let's do inventory items. That'll work for the name. Now, we also want to replicate this. So we want to do replicated using and have an on rep. So you function do void on rep underscore inventory items. And this is what we call whenever we make a change. So what we could really do is when this, you know, inventory gets updated, because we don't really care what's in the other person's widget, we could fire off inside the onwrap the actual last element to the array. And that'll be our new item. So let's go to our onwrap. Let's create the implementation of it. So inside of here, we have the function add inventory, sorry, the event, add item to inventory widget. So let's call that again. So add item to inventory widget. However, we don't have a parameter. So what we want to do is we want to get the last element that was added to our array. So we're going to go ahead and access our inventory items dot, or better yet, dot num to get the count of items. And I want to make sure it's valid. So if let's do f item data item data equals inventory items at the index of the last item. Okay, this is going to complain because we're not doing it with a pointer. Let me move it out of there and then check it. Can I not check a structure? Is there a valid? I guess not. 
So we're just going to do it this route and pass in item data. So we should probably subtract from it. So for example, uh, let's say I might put it this in notepad a little bit cleaner. So we have an array of uh, my array equals 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, if I want to get the number of this, what unrelated would turn is int array count elements equals my array dot num. Well, array elements is going to equal 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's say we try to access that. So since those are just integers, int my selected or my last element equals my array at array elements, we're going to get an out of bounds error because we're accessing the fourth element. Well, an array starts at zero, not at one. This acts as if it, this kind of gives us the number of elements. So if there's zero, there's, this is going to be zero. If there's one element, there's going to be one. Or sorry, if there's zero, this is, I think there's, I don't even know what this actually returns if there's nothing. Does it say? Terms, number, so yeah. So zero get returned if this is an empty array. So if there's nothing in here. If there's one element, this is going to return one. However, to access this element, we would have to access index zero. So we want to subtract one from this number. And that will give us the current, or let me rephrase that, the uh, actual index, so to speak. So we would always want to make sure this is not empty as well. So the way we do that is if inventory items dot num, meaning it's greater than zero, we add the items. So we can honestly take all this if we really wanted to, and just pass that as a parameter. So we're getting the number of inventory items minus one. So if there's three items, we would get the index or we would get the value two because we have zero, one, two, which would be the third element. And then we simply add it. So the last thing, I want this to be only done on the owning client. So we have to set this up also to replicate. So we have to have our get lifetime replicated props. So I'll just uh, add that down here. So is it search for lifetime, get lifetime replicated props. So here you can have everything there. You can just look at it and copy and paste or sorry, look at it and type it out. Create the implementation. We're going to call super, as always. And we want to do our do rep lifetime underscore condition. And that by default, I think included, yeah, it did, net forward slash unreal network. So in order to complete this, you have to include that header. I'm going to quickly move this actually up right below our setup player input. So I have it. So what do we put in this macro? Well, first parameter, I actually might show you, kinda. So we have C, which is the class, so A, inventory, shop tutorial character, V for the variable, which is going to be our inventory items, and then our condition. So cund underscore owner only, because we only want it to replicate to ourselves. So this function, no, sorry. This function is only going to get called on our own client whenever the server makes the change to it. So now we just have to change up how we call it to update, or sorry, what we call from interact to call the correct function, which will trigger this. So let's go to make a public function. Let's actually move this blueprint event. I'll do it right underneath our on rep. And let's just simply do void add inventory item and we're going to take in an f item data item data for the name create the implementation and we're going to do item or sorry inventory items dot add item data and once that's added we want to call or sorry we want to that's going to call the on rep on our all on its own let's do if has authority Then we add the item like so. 
and that should pretty much handle everything else. So this should work for the client. Let's just, uh, we've already typed a decent bit here. Let's just make sure that it works. Uh, I do see an issue on the server because the on rep is not going to run. So what we could do is just do it like a locally controlled check. Okay. Add item to inventory widget, cannot access, protect member, declared in blah, blah, blah. No, cannot access what protected member. Wait, item.cpp. Ah, yes, we forgot to change the function that we call. So we're no longer in our item.cpp calling the add item to widget. Instead, we're doing add inventory item. And that will take care of that. Okay. Now that we're back here, let's go ahead and give that another test run. Uh, press E. And we have a problem, and that is... We are not actually picking up on the client, which I forgot about. But it's good that we couldn't pick them up. So when we pick them up on the server, obviously they disappear. Press I, nothing happens. We go over here, press I, there's nothing. So we need to fix a bug. Well, not really. Well, yeah, it is a bug. And our interact we have to do on the server too. So here we have our interact. We need a server interact that does literally the same thing. So all we're going to do is interact. We're going to do function it's gonna be a server it's gonna be reliable and it's gonna be with validation we're gonna do void server underscore interact and I want to take in an f vector or better yet uh yeah f vector location and an f rotator or better yet f vector again and so I'm gonna name this one to f vector start and f vector end Create that implementation for the validate. We're going to return true. And I want to point out if you're on Visual Studio, when you implement it, the function is not going to generate the underscore implementation and underscore validate for you. You must do this yourself. So here you can see by reference, you can go ahead and pause. And once you've done that, I want to move the validate above my implementation. That's just out of habit for me. It looks cleaner to me. And I want to set up another, I want to override this interact function with the exact same parameters. So it's gonna take in a start and an end. So let's generate the implementation for that. And here we have our new interact. Now all we're gonna do, we have our start and our end. I'm gonna take this code here, paste it into this interact function. So that way, all we have to do is on the server interact, we can simply do interact and pass in start and end like so. And here we have the check, so if has authority. In our old interact, we simply call interact and pass in start end. Otherwise, we call server underscore interact and pass in start and end again. So that will all trace back to this interact function here, which will, well, interact for clients and the servers. However, you know, depending on your situation, if you're the server, great, you call it directly. If you're the client, you go to the server and then the server calls it. Okay, let's give one final check. We should be able to pick it up. Press E, we do, we do, press I. Here we have our inventory. So food and water. And as you can see, it updated them both on the left side. And we have nothing here on the server because we need to figure out the uh, server bug as well because if we had try right now, we, uh, we don't get any items, which is a problem. So, that bug we're going to fix in the next video, but that's going to be all for this one. And if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons, as well as you get early access to nearly all of my videos. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord that's also linked down in the description below, and I'll try to help you out. So I will see you in the next video.